the center recently advised Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, Maharashtra, and Mizoram uh, to maintain strict watch and take preemptive action if necessary uh, in areas to control any emerging spread of coronavirus. Uh, we now also have the precaution dose or what we call the third shot of COVID-19 vaccine available to all Indian adults at private vaccination centers. My first question is, given the sort of numbers we are seeing at present, uh, if and when is the fourth wave likely to hit and how severe will it be? It depends upon what we mean by the fourth wave. If we are talking about rising number of persons infected, even mildly or asymptomatically, certainly we are seeing the numbers going up and they may go up even further as immunity wanes and people become extremely mobile and start discarding the COVID appropriate behavior. However, if we are really talking about what matters, which is how many people are getting seriously ill, requiring hospitalization, getting intensive care, or even perhaps facing the threat of death, then those numbers are going to be very small. So we are not going to see a fourth wave in that sense. The number of cases going up as mild infections should not really threaten us very much. You say that the fourth wave is likely then I guess to be milder, but uh, would you say that we are well paced in terms of our strategy in handling it, if it does come, in terms of our booster strategy, in terms of our measures for slowing down transmission? I think in terms of the transmission containment measures, we relaxed too early. In fact, I think for many of the states, especially in the national capital region, uh, to have said that you can completely dispense with masks was, I think, very premature. We must recognize that even people who have acquired immunity, whether from vaccination or prior infection, they still run the risk of getting infected if they expose themselves to an actively circulating virus. So discarding masks right now was inappropriate. We should have done our uh, transmission containment withdrawal strategy in stages, permitting travel, permitting even shopping, permitting even other gatherings, but with insistence on masks in indoor locations, particularly those which are ill-ventilated, and large crowded gatherings where people are standing together or sitting together for a long period of time. But giving the people the wrong signal by saying, it's all right, now you can discard your mask, move around without any fear, without any concern. Uh, I think that was the wrong signal. Coming to booster shots, uh, who should be taking them? Uh, when, should, uh, when should they be taking them? And what about, uh, you know, what should the gap be between the second and the booster dose? Well, I think the government has very clearly given its um, recommendations and we should follow whatever are the recommendations of the government. I don't think we have much of a choice there. But the important element is to recognize that the booster experience in Western countries is different from the booster experience in India for two reasons. One is the mRNA vaccines, which have been extensively used in Western countries, have a much shorter duration of immune protection. Uh, the Pfizer starts waning off in terms of effect from the fifth month onwards, and the Moderna from about the sixth month onwards. So that's why they are requiring boosters early on from the fifth month. Whereas our vaccines, it appears, may have a longer period of protection. But we also have had substantial exposure to the Delta virus in 2021 and an early exposure to Omicron in January this year. So many people are already protected either because of vaccines or because of the virus infection or a combination of both. And therefore, the government is adopting the policy that the booster shots can be spaced a little more rather than having them crowded together. Keeping with the topic of booster shots, uh, is this going to be now a regular occurrence? Or is it going to be like a ritual that we'll have to go through every year or a few months? If you actually listen to the manufacturers of the mRNA vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna, they are suggesting that everybody should get a booster annually. However, that may not be really required. Firstly, it depends upon whose immunity is waning to an extent that it puts them at danger. These are elderly people 
and people who are immunocompromised. Young adults may not necessarily have that level of a feeble immunity because we still do not know how long the immunity provided by the T cells and the memory cells is going to be in effect. We are still learning about it. But the risk is likely to be lower for younger people with a fairly robust immune response and a good memory stored in their immune system. Also, it depends upon whether the virus itself is evolving to become more infectious, but less virulent. That is usually the course of evolutionary biology, but we cannot predict that for certainty in this virus, we'll have to keep a watch. If you see the progressive evolution of the virus into Omicron and its subvariants, including the recent XC form, the infectivity is increasing markedly now, but the virulence has not changed. If at all, it may be slightly lower. We'll have to keep a watch. And in case we find a more virulent virus variant appearing for whatever reasons, uh, then we may have to really step up our boosters for everybody. But this is an evolving area of scientific information, and we may have to revise our estimates and recommendations down the road, maybe after three months or four months. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Have a good day. Thank you. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.